Yeah, this this is I think both players' best matchup, right? PVZ and ZVP. So we're definitely going to see the best from these guys right now. Both really good at macro, multitask, everything they got going on. So this is definitely two players we want to see play games. And we're ready. It's time to get into game number one between Jayun and Hawk. Okay, in the top middle, we have Ju. In the bottom left, we have Hawk. Well, Raz, you know, I knew I was going to be casting this weekend, so I made a uh, intelligent purchase on Friday. Oh, yeah? We had, yeah, we had to get that 50% off Papa John's so I could have the leftovers ready Ooh. for today. I always eat some pizza leftovers. Get that energy for this cast. Papa John's, only the best pizza, baby. Only the best. I know you're a big fan of the Papa John's pizza also. That's right. <laughs> when you live in New Jersey, only Papa John's. You don't go to the other pizzerias, yeah. you know? You get disowned if you buy Papa John's in New Jersey, don't you? You do. Your family can just <laughs> toss you out. You gotta go. <laughs> well, well, go ahead. It's going to be interesting that he's going with the 9. I think it's going to be a 9 or 10 gate. Um, because this map has pretty much a 3 zealot uh, wall needed to block. So Hawk does like to play 9 pool sometimes. So I'm a little surprised Jane didn't start with the forge here, especially at this base. Because to the right of the gateway, there's two openings. And then between the gateway and the forge will be another. But mm. it's hatch first. Sounds like we need Gypsy here. He's our wall expert. He knows mm. how to close up those gaps. For those of you that don't know what I was referencing, there was like, was it either a ladder game? I, I can't remember, but Gypsy was saying this wall was like ling tight and there actually ended up being like four gaps. It was, it was an unreal amount of gaps. <laughs> it was not even close to being ling tight. Now this probe is interesting. It looks like it could be setting up for like a cannon rush, but the overlord already sees like hey dude you're going for a gateway so i'm not sure what this drone is actually trying to prevent yeah i'm not sure unless it took some damage early and he was worried that jane would kill it but not the case and drone is going to be putting down that third hatch in just a moment jayun can he prevent it doesn't look like he's going to get there in time. It is just a one Zealot Nexus. Yeah, I think that's a good option versus the build he's seeing. Um, Actually, it was Nexus before Zealot. I, I, I was going to say, I think it was this, the Zealot first because that Nexus is pretty far along ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and Jayun, is he going to go Cybernetics immediately or Forge? What's going to be the follow up for him? Forge, okay. Yeah, I thought maybe he might, because he went gas already, so I thought maybe he might just go core and put the forge in the main. Oh, no. Wow. Well, we, we got a problem now. We're in the dark. I was about to ask you, like, you always love when you lo lose your first probe right when Zerg right starts mining gas, right? Like, that's the right ideal away. time. I don't always try to lose my probe, but when yeah. I do, I want it to be when the gas starts, you know? Yeah. So I can really hate myself later when two Hydrodens go down and they go speed range and come kill you immediately. Well, I mean, you at least have an excuse. Like, if you lose to that, you can just say, oh, well, I just messed up in, in the beginning, got lucky, right? He got lucky. That's it. That's always well, how I cope with my loss. You know, I just tell how lucky the other players are. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is the Hydrodens. As expected, three. It should be nine. I'm expecting it to be nine, seven, three. I guess it could be an all in, but this is a little bit of a mix up from Hawk because in the Dark Origin games, even though he opened Hydra, you know, it was big time macro, whereas this one I don't think is going to be big time macro. Uh, I don't think so either. I think we're just going to see Hydras. It's all about how many Hydras Hawk decides to make here. Is he going to go for it and just try to bust Jayun, or is he going to? You know, build five, hit the wall. We have Ling speed, too. Yeah, Ling a speed. A lot of variations. Getting, you know, 
getting a little crazy because if you didn't see, you know, Zergling speed by five minutes or 440, you're like, oh, it's definitely Hydra. But now we have Ling speed and Hydras. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, I think this is an all-in. I think he's going to use the Lings to take the Gazella in cannon shot and then behind it just focus down the cannons with the Hydras. But more drones coming in for Hawk. Going into that 973, potentially, you want to have, you know, 22 drones around there. So he's at 21 right now, just needs one more. Meanwhile, Jay Yoon, did he go Citadel? Like, I don't see a big building in his base. Yeah, he's been playing this style a lot lately, where he just skips the Stargate himself, and he gets right into three gateways, four gateways with speed, puts some pressure, and then if he needs, he goes Dark Archon. Oh, no. Oh, there you go. Stargate. N plus one. Wow. Okay. So it's complete misread by me. I thought there was no Star Stargate. I thought it was straight Citadel. But the first Hydras are out, but it's not 973. He's already up into 24 drones. So it's going to be a little bit better econ. However, Jayun's starting to build more cannons. He's got a second one completed. He still ha he has no idea what this is. He hasn't scouted at all with his out. Oh, no. If he moves out, this is a disaster. He'll be dead. That will be for sure. He still may die here with only two cannons. I mean, he does have seven zealots, but I, I don't know. Yeah, he, Hydras are a good unit, man. Hydras oh, are a good unit. Look at the Corsair. Does it spot? Does it spot? It yes, does. it does. Yeah, Get that probe. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. He's done. He's got 630 plus one weapon on his ground, but... <laughs> The Hydra is just going to chew through everything. The Lings, like I said, are going to soak up the hits. All the Zealots are going to bleed off. He had eight Zealots, now it's down to three. Probes are coming offline. By the way, this is an Artosis pylon. He is going to hold for now, but he's forced out a lot of cannons. Yeah, I'm surprised Hawk didn't want to jump on these cannons right here, only with the one Zealot in the front. I thought he would be able to just go, but he knows better than I do. Oh, he wanted the gateway down. Oh, the Zealot went, don't stand there and watch, help out! Come on, man! What are you doing? There you go! There he goes, he just needed, he needed the Hydras to come to him. Mm. Like, he's not putting in any extra effort. If you want me to swing, you gotta come and get at me, right? So... It's like, say it to my face, Hydra, say it to my face. But, I think we have a problem here. Now, can we have probes in one cannon versus about nine Hydra? Or eight Hydra? Two more coming in. Not looking good right now. And there's the GG from JU. The GG comes out, and that means Hawk. He strikes in game one with a really nice Hydra timing. Uh, you, knew, you knew it was coming. And Jay Yoon, I mean, it was just kind of a bad situation from the get go. You lose your 330 probe. What can you do from that situation? Tell the guy is lucky and move on to game number two. That's it. Only <laughs> option you have. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, these these just Hydra busts are just so strong, you know? Like, if you really don't get a good scat on it and see it, and your cannons are just a little late, like you saw he added four cannons, but they're just, you know, five seconds too late, and he dies. It's just it's just very tough. Got to be on the map. Got to try to figure out what's going on. I don't know if his Sarah was, like, a little late, didn't seem like Stargate was too late, but uh, he saw the Hydras, but still didn't matter. Well, the build order choice from Jayun was quite interesting because, as I pointed out, his, he had weapon done at 6.30. Like, I think he got it even before his Stargate started, which is why the Stargate was a little late. So I guess he was going for some sick 1-1 one, one timing, you know, plus one armor, plus one weapon, but never got to that point. Now we're getting into game two. It's going to be Hawk banning something, Jae Yoon picking something. So I'm Jae Yoon here. I don't even know what I pick. Do I want to play a macro game like Radeon? Do I want to try and just defend the whole game? Try and split it? Uh, you know, pick Dark Origin? Yeah, I mean, depends on how he's feeling. What, what kind of style he wants to play here with Hawk. I think he knows Hawk also likes to sit a bunch, but map like Dark Origin, you can split it in half, sit in the middle with your army, and, and you just park it there and you're good to go. Yeah, you just cast Storm, have some good uh, vision of the map, looking for those counterattacks, plop some Reavers, 
then what does Berserk do as the game goes on? We saw Hawk eventually run out of money versus Dragon. Uh, our players are ready in just a moment, and we'll be getting into game two. Are we already in it? No, we're not. I wonder what map Hawk banned. Yeah, if I'm Hawk here, Lobotomy didn't go very well for you versus Dragon. It's also, you know, a BSL only map. Um, maybe you're vetoing that, but you know, my experience playing in BSL, even if you don't have experience on that map, it's likely the opposing player doesn't have experience either, yep. and they're not going to pick it. Um, so I, I probably wouldn't veto it. I would probably. What's a, let me go look at the map pool again. What's a good map for Protoss? You know, I actually think Retro is pretty good PvZ. I maybe would have vetoed that. And looks like actually Jayun is going to go for Dark Origin. So good map in general. Wonder if he'll try and split or try and bring it to Hawk. Let's get into game two, see if Hawk can eliminate Jayun. Okay, in the top top left, we do have the one and only it's Hawk. And in the bottom right, we have Jayun. I'm interested to see what build he decides to go with here. Again, now can like I've seen oops, I don't know where that probe was going. Got a little lost on this way out. You know, you can a lot Nexus first is very popular here. Um, normally we would see that pylon up more up against the wall to make a one uh, gap wall, but Jayun choosing just to put the pylon down, bringing the pro back, which tells me most likely going to be a gateway. Okay, I was wondering what that second probe was for, but it is going to be gateway coming down. Now, even though we haven't seen it, oh, I was. Is that pylon in a... No, pylon's in a fine position. I was thinking it might be a double gate, but not going to be the case. But what I was going to say was, I can't remember whether it was snow. I've recently been watching a lot of snow games or someone else. But what somebody did was they sent out two probes. One probe denied the natural and the other probe denied the third base. And this <laughs> natural hatchery just never got put down for like 30 or 40 more seconds. It was like really crippling, actually. But we don't see that. It would cripple this build from Hawk because he's going to send a drone to both base. And imagine if there was a probe sitting there. Then what do you do? You can build a hatch in your main? <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. Sending out the double probe. But if you get the block for long enough, it's the value's there. Oh, he didn't even block the natural. Oof. Well, Could have put a pylon there. over there and then went to third base and blocked again. Yeah, and this was again another overpool. This, it's not Nexus immediately from Jayun. He's building multiple Zealot it's here, I think. Yeah, sometimes you, some players will go third pylon, yes, and just continue to make Zealots. And then that way, Zerg really takes a hit on the drone count because all their larva has to go to Zerglings. Yep, in so, probe. Go ahead. I was say, it's just a kind of a way to. Even though it slows down your nexus, like you put so much pressure on that you just, you can just get a nice lead. Oh, Zealot snuck into a good position here, but does not have enough damage to actually knock down this hatchery. He actually got a counterattack, and this is gonna get weird. There's gonna be a Zealot trying to hold the ramp. Oh, maybe hold the ramp, you gotta get on the ramp first. Probe gets there in the nick of time. Zealot, okay, now it's not weird anymore. Two Zealots plus a probe. This is going to get shut down. However, Ling's just walk in, man. Not what you want. Zerglings in your base. Oh, this is going to get ugly. And it's going to get... Oh, no, he's not mining oh, with those Oh, no, probes. those aren't mining. All right. Well, in Hawk's main, he didn't start getting gas. He may go into straight speed since he has these four lings alive. Four lings can deal a lot of damage. Protops, the, or the, the Zealot, is never going to catch them. Oh, two Zealots across the map. This is going to get ugly. He may two be able to deny this third base for a while. Look at that, he didn't lose any Zealots. Wow. Two probes did go down. It hurts right now, but we see 
that Jayun does have a healthy worker lead still here at this point, and may even get a cancel on this hatchery, man. No, or kill it! Guy. He's gonna kill that thing. These links are late. He just has to focus fire it. And he oh. did. Okay, that's great. That's oh. amazing. That puts Hawk kind of all in. I think he's actually all inning. I think he ended up getting speed. These probes, they got a mine. No, it's, it is speed and lair. Wow. Oh, no. He doesn't mine. notice the probes. No, Jay, you know. He needs a cannon in his vein. Cannon at his natural, and he's fine. Just retreat these zealots and mine, please. Uh, oh, no. He's, he's micring the zealots. He's trying to save them. He doesn't realize he's only mining with half his probes. Okay, he's recognized it, putting them back on. That's unfortunate, man. Trying to hold the bridge, okay. See you, Ling. Oh, he's gonna see more Lings. Uh oh. More Lings. Oh, oh no! Can't. I didn't even see that! Oh no, the Lings get there. We just have a flood of Zerglings coming in, man. Oh, Here no. they come! He doesn't have. He can. He oh! Jayun, GG. Wow. Hawk just with the killer instinct there and is like, I'm just going to this. I lost my third hatch. I got four lings in. Speedling all in. Successful. Yeah, too much action happening everywhere in your main. At the natural with the zealots at the hatchery with the zealots trying to get back to safety. It was just too much to keep up. And unfortunately, Jayun, he will be eliminated. And Scheming Gypsy, thank excited you for, for the massive tip, man. I'm also Roll excited for the DSL the season. Finals. We already have a Protoss through. Dragon looks quite strong. And Hawk so far, even though he's down in the loser's bracket, also looking very good. And his next opponent will be Boa. Yeah, this should be another really solid game. You know, Boa, very strong PvZ as well. Um, Sometimes his downfall is he attacks into areas that he shouldn't be. He tries to make it happen and he gets caught with Lurker. So if he can avoid that and just play into a normal game, I think he will be fine. Yeah, and Boa has really crisp timings. I know from experience playing him on the ladder, PVT, you take a third base versus that guy, uh, you better be set up perfectly because he's coming at you with a really solid timing. Of course, PVZ completely different but I do know that he plays low probe count so Hawk needs to be uh, on his toes for all those cute uh, first timings that throws at you Boa I'm trying to think is he someone that sneaks DTs in like I don't remember seeing him play like DT harassment generally when I think of Boa he's just like all right we're gonna fight man and whoever uh, wins this fight is probably gonna win the game he just wants to have a massive army to throw it at you yeah, I think he likes the gate timings where he just kind of pushes out, puts a lot of pressure on you, tries to take a third behind it. Like you said, he definitely plays with the lower pro count, usually in this matchup, and just tries to get units, 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 and then catch you off guard. So I think for the losers match, I think the, the map choice is lobotomy, which is going to be interesting because the likelihood of... Oh, it's Citadel, not lobotomy. My bad, Citadel. So it is a standard map. I was thinking it was lobotomy for some reason. But Citadel, what do you think about PVZ on here? I think it's very strong that you can, you know, get to that third gas. It's not that far away. You can kind of stay on the high grounds like those double ramps um, and kind of sit there a little bit. Um, watching a lot of the pro matches on there, it's normally what you see Protoss do. They take a third, sit up there with goons and storm. Uh, can be tricky in the early parts of the game. I think this is a pretty strong 973 map, just the way the naturals are set up to get your Hydra up against the gateway and the forge. So Boa definitely needs to be careful of that. Uh, and then drop play can be really strong here for Zerg, just because your army is so far out of your main that it's hard to keep going back and forth. Yeah, and the mains are huge. <laughs> like you can definitely get a drop off. We are getting into game one now. Is it going to be Hawk or Boa making it out in second place? Okay, in the top left, we do have Hawk. And in the bottom left, it is Boa. Yep, so like I said, I've been watching a few snow games recently, mostly because he's been crushing 
overall. And if I remember correctly on this map, he played something like a 10 gate build. It was absurd that he went 10 gate, but he was somehow able to afford it. I wonder if Boa will try something similar, whether it's 8 gate, 9 gate, or some, something along those lines. There goes that probe, of course, at the entrance. Yeah, Snow definitely interesting with his build choices, like stuff like that, going like 10 gates on two bases or opening with the 10 gate opener instead of a nine gate, you know, and harassing the third base and just kind of blocks. So he's definitely crazy, man. And there is going to be a nine gate, I think. Yep, nine yes. gate for Boa. And Hawk has just gone over pool every game. Yeah, I was about to say, I can't imagine him not going over pool. And there it is. And I will see what Boa decides to do versus this. Will he go like Jayun and put a third pylon down and press, or will he take a Nexus? What is he gonna? What's he gonna do versus the overpool? Yeah, and I was just about to ask you if you if you know it's gonna be overpool. You know, we saw Jayun go Nexus Zealot. We had him build multiple Zealots and go. What are you looking to do when you open with this? I mean, it's a nine gate, so I can't imagine him going Nexus before Zealot here. But like, if I get one drone, am I feeling good? If I get two drones. Did I win the game? Like, what what am I looking to do with this? It's a little bit harder to get some drone kills just because the lings are there. But if you're going to send the zealot across the map, then you're you're definitely looking for one or two drones. If you can do that, two is like a really solid number. Three is almost like I don't want to say game ending, but makes it really hard for Zerg if they lose three drones to start. Uh, a lot of times with this versus Overpool, you may send the zealot to the third base and kind of like plant it behind the mineral line and send another zealot to the main. Just continue to force Zerg to make Zerglings and kind of defend those areas. Because, like I said, last game, the larva count it just isn't there with the overpool. Yep, and Probe. Oh. Manages to survive. No, he does not! Oh. So he took a he took a playbook out of jay uh, uh, playbook there. He took a play out of jay playbook. And now he's in the dark. And actually, Hawk has gone for kind of an interesting third hatch position instead of taking the close mineral only he's taking the top middle base and like you were saying this has a ramp so if i was protoss and saw this i would immediately be thinking wow this guy's gonna play defensively because why else do you need that third gas yeah i'm a little surprised he chose that location maybe didn't want to expand towards boa um, but it's also going to be hard for him to def just defend in general on two fronts right like He's going to have to sit in there, probably with Lurkers and Suggins, and then do the same thing on the ramps, because this it's just very far away. Yep, now we do have three Zealots, four Zealots already for Boa. That is a lot of uh, potential attacking firepower. Forge coming down to get that cannon. Hawk has ended up going Lair this time. Boa has no idea about this third hatch replacement, so he's just got to play it, you know, by the books here. He's going to most likely go Stargate, you know, be respectful that this could be Hydra, so he's going to at least put down one cannon. Probe is going to try and sneak out, but Ling sees it immediately. I think we're going to see a five zealot move out here from Boa, or at least fake it, walk halfway across the map and walk back just to force more Zergling so Hawk can't just drone, drone, drone. Ooh, I was going to say this is a slick move out, but I see the Overlord is intercepting it immediately. This is five zealots. This is an absurd amount of zealots, is it not? This, to me, seems like it's going to be tough to, sp to stop. There's only eight lings out right now. Yeah, he's going to have to just produce Zerglings with all of his larva right now. You know, get that count up, because if he takes one bad engage, it, you know, he's just going to be so behind. And the zealots are trying to get into the sweet spot here. I don't know if this is the exact angle you want. In fact, I don't think it's the angle you want at all, but he kills that Ling immediately. What's that Ling? Zealot doing attacking the egg? Yeah, there's way too many Zealots. Now he can hold this ramp like you were talking about. You're not getting through here. And by the way, that's high ground, so the Lings don't know when the Zealots move forward or not. Yeah, and two Zealots going into the main here. We're gonna get some... Oh, he's going for the Spire. And, oh, the oh, Hawk trying to glitch. Oh, well, that was really good glitching really good glitching these lings are getting better trades than they should 
and this is an overwhelming MLings. All these zealots are going to fall. The zealots at least confirm that it's fire. Oh. He also gets into the third base and starts getting some drones. Well, good job by Hawk here. At least clean up the zealots in the main. But now we're losing some mining time. We made a lot of zerglings. If you saw before, the worker count difference was only about one. Now we're up to seven with this pressure from Boa. Yeah, that was a really good move out. Not sure if he got the trades he was looking for because these drones are still alive. The Spire is also basically done. So Mew's gonna be on the way pretty soon. I will say the Zealots also confirmed that there's no Nat Gas. He's still going double target. I was going to say, I don't think it's going to be an overwhelming amount of mutas. I think it's actually just going to be a couple and then transition into a normal game. But Bo is thinking otherwise. He's gone double Stargate. Yeah, this is this could be risky. You, you got to get some damage done on the Overlords. You got to get a bunch of kills because if not, you're investing a lot of money in tech into just Sayers. Yep, and there's the drone cycles that I was expecting. So Hawk is already almost... Uh, recovered his drone count. There's no mutas out just yet. So Boa may be thinking like, hmm, shouldn't you have these by now? Have I been duped? Corsair's gonna be moving out, but Scourge should be on the field. Yeah, they are already out. Yeah, he's gonna wait for that. Probably need to get to that magic number of about six with the plus one. Then he can move himself back on the map. Just gonna gather intel, see what's going on. But very standard here for him. Hawk, right? Nothing super crazy. Yep, it's five hatch production for him. Cannons coming down at the natural and the main. Corsair. <laughs> I don't know why he moved it just then, but he avoids the scourge. Yeah. Lucky move there to get not run into those two that are just sitting there. Well, but, oh, it actually, is Muta. It is actually Muta. And there's no Hydra Den, I don't think. There's no evolution chamber. So this should catch Hawk completely off guard. Did Boa really just come up with the massive counter? He's gonna have seven Corsairs in just a moment. His plus one is gonna be done pretty soon. He's probably gonna go into either nine or 11 Corsairs and just try and critically supply block Hawk. Yeah, he's gonna be really happy to see the Muta fly down here because they're gonna get like no damage done. I thought Hawk maybe might even transition into just mass muta scourge with taking the third gas, but he just took it now, so I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, this seems like it could be a disaster. Hawk, he is building a lot of scourge and a lot of mutas, and they're just going to get mowed down by these nine corsairs. Hawk obviously not all in with this because he has the five hatches. He does have evolution chamber for the plus one hydras, but like you said, these mutas are going to do nothing. I don't think he realizes that it's going to be nine either. Like, this is a lot to have at this point. Yeah, he's going to know once he sees that count. Like, oh, no, this is double Stargate. Yeah, he needs to really good. He's already running. <laughs> you need to run. Yeah, he uh, needs armor's to Armor's not done. Oh, no. This is going to be a massive. There's, this is going to be an absolute destruction oh, of all these, all these overlords. He, he, he can't even build Hydras now. He can't build anything because he's permissible. Okay, we may just see GG from the Sayers. Wow. Look how fast yeah. they wow, the Muta just went down right away. He can't reinforce this army either because he, he supply has block. supply blocked, yeah. He can't build anything. All he can do is just sit here and watch. He can build spores, but he's not building spores. He can build overlords, that's for sure. Yeah, but <laughs> about gonna get... eight in production. Yeah, they're just going to get immediately killed, though. He's going to come over here. Kill these? Oh my, he kills every overlord. There's four of them dying right here. These are gonna pop, and mm. these are gonna die. And then he's got four more overlords, <laughs> the natural. Oh man, and we have a zealot move out as well right now, so. Oh man, Hawk cannot be happy with this right here. Yeah. He does have plus one, but my, oh. this Sarah count's just so high. I wish, I wish those zealots didn't have speed because it, just to me, I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, you're not going to leave the game to these stairs? Let me just walk across the map and make <laughs> you leave the game. Here's the zealots. There's no counter. The scourge get melted. The mutas get melted. And unless I'm missing something, Boa is moments away from taking game one. Hawk is still supply block, by the way. Yeah, it's getting worse. 
everybody get your Ardo pains in the chat because this is one of the worst ways to lose the game. Like just perma supply block. You thought 44 out of 44 was a bad supply block? No. You just, the, wow. what was it? The last minute and a half, Hawk could build nothing. Just overlords to get also killed. <laughs> yeah. More and more overlords to feed the Sairs. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man, that was that was a great counter from Bo. I don't know what triggered him to go double Stargate because, you know, as a as a non Protoss player, I see no Nat Gas. What would why would I ever think that this guy's gonna go Mutas if he doesn't have a Nat Gas? But it was the correct read. It, it was the correct read. I, yeah, I don't know what triggered him to do double Stargate because you see that like oh maybe they'll do the five Muta harass, but just one Stargate takes care of that because you don't want to have so many Sayer to have to deal with Hydra that come in later. So. But double Stargate was perfect, and he was able to just run over Hawk right there. Yeah, we've been hyping up Hawk, you know, all bracket long. But so far, results say a totally different story. You know, he's 0-3 so far versus these Protoss players. He tried to split the map on Dark Origin, went into an epic 30-minute game. That didn't work. Dragon obliterated him on Lobotomy. And now Boa has picked him apart on Citadel. And now Hawk is, you know, his back's on the wall. He's If he loses here, he's out. And I think if you're gonna go back to a map where you had your best chance of winning, it was Dark Origin. Like, he had an epic game there. So I feel like if I'm him, I'm picking that. Oh. There it is. Wow, there it is. You knew it. Yep, Dark Origin. I mean, Hawk just had such killer econ. I feel like... If it was a lesser player, he would have easily run over Dragon. His macro was insane that game. So let's get into game two. See if Hawk can avoid elimination. Okay, in the top left, our Protoss, it's Boa. And the bottom right, fighting for his tournament life, it's Hawk. Now, I wonder if Hawk will go like a nine pool here, because Boa on this map does like to Nexus first, mostly Don't when they... he's in the bottom. When he, yeah, mostly when he's in the bottom right, because you can make the one gap wall. But he, I, in a couple games I've seen him play on this map, he has done a Nexus first. I think it was last season. I think we might have casted the game where he did do that, and I don't know who he was playing against, but he ended up uh, dying to the just nine pool. Okay, well, we'll see. Might have been versus Cross, actually. All right, well, look at this probe scout pattern. Interesting scout pattern. He wants to see avoid the Overlord and deny the hatchery if possible, and it is going to be Overpool once again. That is really an interesting pattern. I guess he just doesn't want the Overlord to know the timing and may make Hawk think something's up. Like, I didn't see your probe in the middle, but it's here. Yeah. Well, he may, you know, when you come down to build the hatch, uh, you may not actually see this probe. So this could be like a forge. This could be a cannon rush. Like, he's going forge at his natural. If the hatchery doesn't spot it, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, going to be tough. Never mind. I think Boa not seeing the drone like by this time, he's just like, okay, I guess you're going pool first, so probably can't do a counter rush against you. Yeah, not going to risk it. And instead, he's going to try and delay this hatch as long as possible, but you know, there's no there's no double probe here, so you can't deny both of them. Natural goes down, and Boa, he is going to go forge Nexus couple lings are almost done though yeah with this timing he should be able to just put the cannon down as the lings pop and it'll be enough time to for him to do it plus most zerg players are going to chase your probe so yeah. buy some time yep and that's exactly what he's done four lings this is just what hawk has done every single game is this four lings drone okay a little bit of a mix up he's built an additional drone this time but that's because he knows it's a forge and boa don't do it again don't lose this probe immediately he's trying to hide as long as possible this could be the no gas build that hawk put. nope of course no can no can no can 
just it's just the curse of the you know commentator it's only me when you, when you make predictions it doesn't happen it, you don't get immediately countered but me they're just like no we're gonna go for a normal build order we're gonna have boa try and respond in the dark now and he lost his probe at three minutes again he's in a risky situation now yeah always tough like keep saying it but being in the dark here like zerg can be doing anything right? he could just be yeah. flooding zerglings yeah. he could be making a hydra dent like he he literally could be doing anything yeah i, I like how you mentioned the link flood so this happened uh, a few months ago i was playing ladder on this map and i walled off terran versus zerg as you do you know i only built like one marine haha <laughs> i walled in you can't kill me and what this guy did was because Terran had no intel, just like Protoss has no intel right now. This guy sent six, was it six? I think maybe eight drones across the map. Mined out that mineral at the oh, top yeah. of at the top of the map and then Ling flooded me. I was so mad. Never again did I not build or send an SCV behind there to scout for it. It's not happening this time, but you know, Hawk could have done that. And then what does this cannon do for you? <laughs> Nothing, because there's no defense in the main, but it is going to be a three hatch hydro play could see another 973 Yeah, 973 always strong can be able to pick up the forge in the gateway take that stuff out so really helpful but i've also experienced that nayukin and the person sent four drones mine and then made an extractor so they didn't have to send eight okay yeah, yeah. it's a uh, tilting way to lose to say the least but it's not happening this time it is just going to this looks like what he did to Jayun. The five-minute yeah. speed. It's almost like, it's almost the exact same, except he has one more drone, it seems like. Yeah, this seems to be a popular build right now with, the, you know, the speed, Ling, Hydra, Bust. Um, but Boa, once again, reading pretty well into it, making a second cannon already. Um, does see the Overlord still here, so maybe that's triggering him to be like, eh, something's a little weird. You also didn't send any, like, Zerglings here to see what's going on, so, like, what's up? Yeah. Maybe Boa can sniff this out. He does have a second cannon completed. Citadel's done. I think Templar Archive is at the top left corner of his base, but either way, Hydras are on the field now, and the Corsair is going to intercept them, so Boa's gonna have to build a lot of cannons real quickly. Yeah, the difference with Boa's uh -oh. wall is that he, oh no, not the Sair, is that Boa has his cannons placed a hex back, so he'll be able to, he'll give up the forge and the gateway, but he should yeah. be able to hold the flood. Yep, he should be able to. Behind this, Hawk is building his fourth and fifth hatch, so he'll be able to transition out of this if he has to. Corsairs are trying to take down the Overlord because, of course, if you can get a DT out and there's no detection, you know, that can just save the game for you. Here comes Hawk. If he can get the Forge, that would be great. We're approaching the point in the game where Protoss's plus one will be completing, so if he can eliminate that, that would be amazing. The Overlord is gonna die. Well, see ya. But no DT. It's just getting uh, Templar out. Oh, Forge, did it finish? Did he get it? No, he had to cancel. That stings. He's going and for here it. Here he wow. goes. Uh, six oh, cannons. Going though, in, one. man. I don't think he can win this. It's oh. usually. That cannon. One... Two health. <laughs> wow. Moa definitely taking some losses, but overall holding and, you know. Hawk's drone count just so low, and he's continuing to make Hydra. Yeah, and this Sair has gotten two Overlord kills. Look, 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 look at Hawk. He learned from last game. He's like, I'm not going to be supply blocked. 76 uh, well, available supply. Looks like he messed up there, built way too many Overlords by accident. You know, maybe if those Overlords were Hydras, he might have been able to push through. Yeah, maybe. But he'll never be supply blocked again this game. So that's it. Yeah, that ain't happened. But well, really good game state here for Boa. Yep, I you know, think he, that he held chamber. the bust, and he's able to get these gateways down. Like his gateway timing is pretty good. So, 
yeah, he doesn't have any zealots, but he's critically gotten out the Templars, and he's got enough cannons. And the cannons should hold, but if he needs a storm, he can, you know, layer them. But as they just sit there and generate energy, you know, he'll have double storm, maybe triple storm, by the time he actually wants to move out. Hawk just now, putting down his six hatch, he's starting to recover his drone count up to almost even workers, 38 to 44. Hawk? Is he really going to try and take a fourth base? That drone is acting like he wants to go somewhere. Oh, there's already a drone out on the map. Hmm. Hawk did take a very early, you know, fourth base in his first series on this map as well. So, and we see Lurker upgrade going on right now. Ooh. Oof. He thinks there may be a Mutalisk switch. Yep. Muta are going to hate their lives when they see that Maelstrom, if he's, of course, going needless. So far, it's just been pure Hydras and Lings. I don't even know if he has a Spire uh, just yet because his lair was delayed for so long. His Evolution Chamber for plus one should be relatively good versus Kratos' plus one. Mars Boo is yeah, I think... Um, Go Dragon I, was, I thought we might see some type of move-out timing here from Boa. I know his gateways were getting up. But sometimes you catch Zerg here just over droning. Like you see that Hawk drone to 47. Uh, it only has about a group of Hydra, but it doesn't even seem like yeah. we have legs or anything up yet. So, ooh, the Maelstrom. Yeah. I, I don't think Bo is going to allow this fourth base to get up and running. Like, that's an illegal move. Throw the flag. This hatchery needs to be denied. You just tried to all in me, and then you're going to go into seven hatch, four bases? Hell no. And there's no way that Hawk can save it. Like, no chance. This isn't even all of Boa's army. Remember, he has the Dark Archon. He has, like, five Templars. So, really nice move right there from Boa denying this base. Oh, no. He's supply blocks. Nuke, and everything that we oh. talked about. It's... We need 12 more overlords. Let's go. Make him. He's, he's gonna try and take it again. I guess the Robo's not done just yet. So, Boa can't deny it this time. That's a lot of lurkers to be, be being built. Um, but Boa should have his round of goons coming pretty soon. More Templars. He's, he's making more Templars, so I don't know if he's just going to go pure Zealot Templar and push in, but I think the Dragoon heavy style, especially for this map, is definitely favorable, but Boa knows what he's doing, so we'll see how that works out. Well, the Lurker's been shown, and so now Boa knows that lurkers are out and should be in position for the fourth base so the fact that boa hasn't sent a probe over to mid left does make me a little worried that he's just gonna try and go for the hail mary and just win the game with his massive push but hawk he's already setting up a contain outside of the bridges the dark archon that's a good maelstrom this is so much dirt where did these come from these units come from there's no seven hatches Wow, but fighting over the bridge, man, it's just so hard. Yeah, it's really hard, and Protoss is down 10 workers and has no third nexus, whereas Zerg is about to have four bases, even upgrades, good tech. And we're getting our lurkers picked off here. Can't be bleeding oh, these units off right now. I, oh. thought that was, I thought that was a good angle for Zerg, but actually not the case because there's no support for the lurkers, so all the lurkers die. And this now it's getting... just Hydras versus yeah, pretty big army here oh. from Boa. Yeah, it's getting scary now. 10 worker differential and Protoss is up 30, uh, yeah, 30 supply. He's got like a 40, uh, 40 supply difference in terms of army. This base is dead. Did Hawk overstep trying to set up that contain? I think trying to go across the bridges was just too much, you know, and now he has to back up, make some sunken colonies over here. I mean, this is not what Hawk wanted right now. I mean, he has so many drones, but only on three bases. So he won't be mining as effective as he wanted if he was able to get that hatchery up. And it looks like Bo is just going to push, man. Well, I think Hawk is doing exactly what he should do. He knows, he knows Boa likes to attack, so instead of trying to fight the 
fight from the bottom side. He's going to try and defend with Sunkins and then have a massive flank in the back. This is the engage that that the wow. hiders are looking for. That's a really good Maelstrom. All it does is freeze them, though. That's because he's storming in the back. He hits so many of the hiders. He hits all those hiders that were Maelstrom. And Hawk, is this it? Oh, man. He's pushing in here. Now can the goons on the high ground, but there are a lot of hydras coming from the back right there. So Hawk may Ooh. hold this. And this is an expensive army to lose. Yeah. All the Dragoons, all the Templar, the Dark Archon. He needs to run that home. But there is more red coming here on the right side. Can Boa reinforce it enough? He just doesn't have army, really. He's got Templars, but he doesn't really have Zealots or Goons here. The Storms, a couple of them land. But I think the Hydras are going to hold behind this just now. Boa starts his third nexus. He's still fine because he critically got rid of the fourth base, but uh, I thought he may have been able to end the game. Actually, that nexus is already done, so Boa should transfer over there, get that up and running. Archon, able to survive, thought it was going to go down. That's going to be nice for Boa to tank some hits from these Hydra as he pushes on. And I'll tell you, Boa's spot looks pretty good again. He's got a third base up, three gases, equal to bases with Zerg. He did lose some heavy tech units in the Dragoons and Templars, but he, he's recovered pretty well. Yeah, critically, Hawk does have plus two weapons, so his units hit really freaking hard. Protoss only has plus one armor right now, but like you said, three base for Protoss with three gases versus three base Zerg. That's pretty damn good. We've got Hawk with another massive army. Moving over towards the left side, Protoss is completely out of position right now but just now moving back into position not sure exactly what he saw but this is good star sense to try and defend this no actually goes back to the center hey he threw down a couple extra cannons over there as well and is just trying to probably take map control again but hawk is setting up in a really good spot to make a counter yeah i think hawk thinks he can defend with just his hydras and sunkins and he's going to go for the not necessarily the, the base trade but this could get weird where both players are going to make a massive attack instead boa retreats however he's got a lot of probes over here if he can or if hawk can snipe these probes that's going to be a big win for him a lot of aoe here there's a good storm where's the observer the lurker is doing so much damage the dragoons are just walking all over him man close Ooh. Well, Bleeding off was... a couple of units, but I mean, nothing really too crazy there for Boa, right? No big damage done to him. Loses a couple cannons, a couple of units, but holds the third base. Yep, he holds it, so it didn't actually take many losses, but it does buy Hawk time to get his fourth base up. Still, massive armies about to collide over on the left side. I don't think Zerg wants to take that engagement with Protoss on the high ground. Does open up. The bridges, of course, but Boa's just going to shadow the movement. However, Templar's already here, does not get that storm off. There's a, a single storm that goes off. Not the greatest. I hear a maelstrom at the top side. But oh, the, the Dragoons goons. are kind of out of position here, coming from the mid-left. Hydra's able to pick them off, and anytime you can trade some Hydra for some Goons, you're really happy. Yeah, well, some of these Hydra's also got caught, and that Templar got picked off. This is a crazy game. Action all over the place, multiple angles of attack happening from both sides, multiple uh, units being picked off essentially for free. I'm just going to continue to engage onto these Dragoons because this is the best trade they can possibly get. Supplies are getting slowly higher for Hawk, but not anymore after that big storm. Well, that Overlord's going to supply block him again for a little bit. Boa seems like he just wants to hold this area right here, and I'm going to just get his fourth base up and play to the mid to late game yeah plus one armor should be kicking in for the zerg in just a moment i saw him upgrading it a couple minutes ago protoss has a probe down here is he gonna take the corner i don't know but boa's upgrades definitely lacking a bit one one only plus two armor really late yes. I, if i were a hawk and i saw that he would want to keep fighting yeah, but Hawk's down 40 supply. That's that's the problem. Down 40 supply. Yes, he has an upgrade advantage, but look look at the the comp here. Like there's eight Templars. It's it's storm for days. Oh my He's just sitting goodness. in it. 
Oh my gosh, he loses his entire army. All the lurkers die, all the hydras die, and look what's left over. Like, wow. none of the templars died, none of the goons died. Yeah, I mean, just a crazy trade there for Boa, just with the storms. And, you know, Hawk supply shot way down. And it looks like Boa is going to converge into the middle here and just take full map control. Yeah, as long as he can get some cannons set up at his fourth base, like, he's under no threat of losing it. Like, I think all Hawk can do is, again, move across the map, try and set up a counter, try and get a better angle. He's going to lose his fourth base. There were no sunken set up. There's no chance of holding it. There goes Hawk across the bridges. All he can do is counter mid left. That's all he can do. Yeah, that's the best move he has right now because... He can't fight that army right now. He's got to figure out a way to slow it down or get some picks. But even his lurker count looks very low now. I don't see many, if any at all. Oh my god, there's like 10 Templar Nyuk in the middle of the map. Yeah. Oh, but they're leading the charge. Two, oh. nine, three, four. Yeah, that was a really good trade for Hawk, but he's going to still lose like 15 Hydras here. He, well, he picked off like seven Templars legitimately, but he, it's still a massive army advantage for Protoss. Also, plus two armor kicked in for Protoss now. And now he'll be able to fight really, really well, but Hawk does have top right. Does Boa know about this? Because that, that could be tough to break if Hawk's able to send some defenses up there. Yeah, he doesn't have an observer over there. I can't imagine him thinking that this guy took the fifth base like that when he wasn't even able to hold his fourth. So that could be a saving grace if we get to that point, but I don't know if we're going to get to that point because there's just a massive army. Two more Templars die, not a single storm goes off. Yeah, the Templar want to be in the front. They want to take some shots for everybody else. Look at this guy. Oh. Storm goes down. He can't, he can't kill this army. It, it's too huge. It, it's just a mass. Look how many goons there are. Yeah, and now we talked about before the game too, right? Like 42 probe count on three bases. Yeah. Pretty like low, but a massive army <laughs> supply to lead them. Yeah, when when you play like this, you can snowball the game so fast. And I mean, you're still producing off of like 10 gateways. You don't need to have, you know, 60, 70 probes. Like your army is just ridiculous. And we're starting to see that effect right here. The Hawk, I don't think he can win anymore. All he can do is just try and counter. He's lost two hatches so far. He's going to lose his main. All the drones in the main are going to go down. And if he really wants, he can go above the third there from Hawk and just hit it from the high ground. He will deny this base again. But I think yeah. there are about five Templar coming down. He's going to kill all these probes. But Ooh. it doesn't matter because this is the entire army of Hawk. Oh Look how many, there's more storms goodness. than there are hydras. It's just coating everywhere. Storm after storm. Oh, yep. man. But so, look at the worker count now for Boa after losing all those. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy low, 29. But it's, you know, only going to be 27 for Hawk. Hawk, look at the third base minerals. It's basically mined out because of how fast he got it and how big his drone count was. Yeah, Bo has got to be having a little alarm bell. Like, oh, you're still in this game. You don't have been right. Like, he probably started to figure out he, he has top right. Like, why else would be in this game? Killed the gnat. Killed everything in the main. Yeah, and I here he goes. This could be an instant GG once he gets scouted. Like, he just can't contest this army. It's, well, I guess he's not going to tap out yet because, you know, it is his last game in the tournament. But there's no answer. Boa is going to make it through. That means two Protoss are going to make it through in Group B. Well, started with three, down to two. Wow. Yep, that was not exactly the result I was expect expecting. Hawk, who played macro really well in the entire bracket, just not able to overcome the macro of Boa there. Uh, there was just... What really did it was all those storms at the fourth base where he lost his whole army. That was the the move that broke yeah. the camel's back. You can't recover from losing, what was it, like 20 Hydras plus five Lurkers and all Protoss loss was storm energy. Like, that's a bit much yeah. to overcome. Yeah, I mean, it. Boa played it really well in terms of just taking good positions, just kind of catching where the army was. 
And, you know, like we said, he won that low probe count and got his army bigger and bigger, and he wins a fight like that, and that's it. You know, you really can't recover. Like, you're just battling uphill all the time. And I don't know, the, the fourth seemed really fast for Hawk, both of the times he played on Dark Origin. And Bo was able to get forced to cancel there. Then he was able to attack from there. And Hawk had a really good sandwich of the army, but just yeah. a little too much. Yeah, I actually thought Bo was going to win with that attack, but the sandwich was really good. So unfortunately, Hawk will be eliminated. We got Jayun eliminated also, but two Protoss moving through. Dragon makes it through the top side. Boa makes it through the bottom side. And that's it today. Is it not, Raz? We're going to be having Group A tomorrow. Do you know who's playing tomorrow? Oh, man. One Papa's John's Eater and one non-Papa John's Eater. Yeah. And then, uh... I don't know if Stryker likes Papa John's. Sure he does. Who doesn't, man? Unless you're from New Jersey. And then we oh, also got he Parker. is. <laughs> he is? He's from New Jersey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. So, all right. Well, as you can see, Group A tomorrow, it's going to be Stryker versus Raz first. That's going to be a tough matchup, man. Stryker is really good these days. I know you haven't been playing as much, but I think you can beat him. Then meanwhile... Myself versus Tarson. You know, I've hit Tarson on the ladder quite a bit. He's really good. He came from Gosu League. Uh, I think that this is going to be a close group. I think everybody here is relatively around the same level, kind of like today with Group B. You know, a lot of times when I see groups, I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, Gypsy's the favorite, OEG's the favorite, you know, Bonnet the favorite, etc. But I feel like legitimately everybody can get out of this group and, you know, just like today, anybody can get out. Yeah, I mean... Once again, we have a lot of NA folk here, so we all play a lot of games, so that'll always make it a little more interesting as we go into it. Um, but we'll accept Tarson as, you know, NA for right now, just because he's in our group. Yeah. That's it. I, we'll I adopt him. Is, I think this is one of the hardest groups for me to practice for. Generally, when I've had to play in PSL, it's like three Protoss or like three Zergs or something. Like, I think in BSL 6, you know, I had like Kenzie and Eon Zerg and someone else. But this time, I got to practice for all the races. Uh, you you only got two. You don't have to worry about Protoss. How'd that happen? Isn't BSL mostly Protoss? The, the, you know, Zero spared me this year because he knows yeah. I play only PvP on the ladder. So he tried to give me a break. <laughs> he was like, you know, it's only fair that he doesn't have to do this all BSL as well. Or, or did he rig it? He's like, you know, all that practice Raz is getting. <laughs> yeah, let's not let's not let any of that practice actually help him in BSL. Let's give him all, all Zergs and Terrans. No Protus. He's got to. He's got to suffer. Yeah. Right. Don't let me get the PVP. Thanks, Mister Zero. Yeah, thank you, Zero. <laughs> Once every ten seasons. Yeah, most of my groups are usually Protus. That's all right. <laughs> well, uh, I think that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, we've got a shout out all of our supporters of the BSL. First, we got Esports Fund as our main supporter, and then. With the support of you out there our patreon supporters and just direct donators at the hundred dollar level we have my fleeting dream fifty dollar level we got striker 30 10 cuz to apocalypse at twenty dollars level we got kevin yujong madinho steven robertson suricata your boy machine well tina bulai gordon bradley kg streaming channel daniel lopez lml nicholas schuler and cork and all you other Patreon supporters, thank you so much for the continued support of the BSL. Remember, $20, or is it 20 or 10 I think it's $10, $10 or above. You get all the replays um, from BSL, so definitely consider becoming a Patreon supporter if you want those. And that's it, Raz. You got any final words before we leave? Nope. Thanks, for everyone, for watching. It was definitely an exciting day, and hopefully we can put on a good show as well tomorrow. Yep, I agree with that. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to playing tomorrow and hopefully having a good result here with Raz and see if we can push through some American, American players into the round of 16.